I think, therefore I am. All right, who said that? Forget. <sighs> Descartes. All right, moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> you need to learn more quotes, Phoenix. Seriously. All right. I'm busy so, playing Pokemon. So, high school, <laughs> high school or Peter? Uh, Peter. We did high school. All right, we'll do some more Peter. <laughs> uh, there are none of these experiences that you can do right now. Oh, you've done everything with Peter. Well, I guess we're going back to high school. Apparently. How old are you? Uh, 17, six months. All right. You're rich. You've got almost $3,000. Yeah! Please don't do that. <laughs> Warning, this episode contains subject matter of a sexual nature. Of course we wish Shut to continue. Her. Mr. Hummer. <laughs> Your math teacher. Oh, no. No! Don't do it, Phoenix. That's the dark side of the force. <laughs> It's quicker okay. and easier and more seductive, but you can't. Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. Midi chlorians. All right. Are you done? Yes, Mr. Hummer, your math teacher, is a 26-year-old super hunk. He puts a he puts any guy in the school, including Peter, to shame. One year on a class trip to the beach, he wore a bikini, bathing suit, and you almost died. And why is he wearing a bikini? <laughs> Mr. Hummer is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> He's very fabulous. Got emo hair. Anyway, every night before you can go to bed, you can't help thinking about what it might be like to be with someone like him. You are beginning to think you are <laughs> having a sexual obsession. Once again, I really wish I would insert the quote from Seinfeld where Kramer says, psychosexual but I'm not that clever so you can try to blot him completely out of your mind or you can flirt with him block him completely no out come of on let's go for the statutory rape ending let's do no! it please he'll probably kill me oh come on like, he's probably that freak oh come on we we we've saved not too long ago and actually I found out how we can reverse that come on let's flirt with him Fine. This is going to be awesome. Mr. Hummer gives you a nice big smile and a pat on the head. Don't you feel like a, you feel like a puppy dog? Doesn't he know you're a woman? <laughs> you strike out hard. All right. Awesome. So, we're going to save again because we actually haven't saved that long ago. I was lying. And <laughs> let's try another shot at Mr. Hummer. Why? I don't know. The local police are called to this. <coughs> local police are called to search several lockers for illegal substances. Have you stashed anything in there you wouldn't want anyone to find? Yes or no? No. The only things that they find are two pieces of dried out pizza from the cafeteria. That's gross. Yeah. At first, they think the pizza is the product of some sort of satanic ritual. After they have it <laughs> analyzed, they send, to, they send the Board of Health to inspect the kitchen. The mail's here. Sorry. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. Mail no. time! Here's the mail. It never fails. It always makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Mail! mail. Alright. Alright. <laughs> the teacher... <laughs> The teacher asks for a volunteer from the class to help an Italian exchange student, Gino, learn to speak English. You can immediately jump his bones, volunteer or not volunteer. Volunteer. Oh, okay. Wouldn't it be great if Gino were this in again what's Gino were this incredible looking, sexy, wild, uninhibited Italian fox. Don't you think about anything else? Read a book! Go outside! Live! <laughs> Doesn't the school have any other type of person? It would be, but as it turns out, Gino is rather ordinary looking. Do you? 
Stop helping him after a short period of time, or stick with it. What? You can pussy uh, out, or you can stick with it. Stick with it? Alright, good. As it turns out, Gino has a really great personality! And that's all he has. He is a good- he becomes a good friend. Yay! Woot! Almost 18 yet? Uh, not quite. More high school. Yay! You have forgotten your new class schedule. Wait, it's the middle of the year! What are you- Will you go down to the office and get a new one, or walk into a class that looks like the one you should be in? Get a new one. Actually, I would say that the second option is stupid, but term just started, and from the looks of things, yeah, a lot of people actually just do the second one. Why? <laughs> Dude, freaking literature class? Three people were in the wrong class. What the That's hell? So sad. How do so, you... so sad. How do you... And what's really weird is they didn't find out until like an hour in. Dude, after an hour of talking about Shakespeare, you should find out you're not in whatever class you thought you were going to be in. <laughs> the hell? Anyway, go down to the office. People are dumb. Room. They don't have a copy of it either. The computer is broken and have to sit you in the office and keep you... You have to sit in the office and keep yourself out of trouble until the computer is working again. Wow. What a great school. At least now you're not having sex with anyone else. That's what you would have been <laughs> doing if you weren't in the computer. <laughs> Harlot. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> you are starving. <laughs> you are starving, and the cafeteria line seems to be moving slowly. You've been putting many things in your mouth, but none of them have been food. Today's menu include meatballs, pizza, and chicken. So the, oh, we have meatballs, bread balls, pizza, cardboard, and chicken, mystery of the unknown, meat pies. Uh, about, sorry, I thought it was best to skip over times when the game attempts humor. Um, about the only thing that seems edible are the french fries and the white powder donuts. Yes, white powder donuts from the school cafeterias are always amazing. <laughs> you take a portion of the fries, but by the time you get to the cash register, you have already finished them. Wow. I was very hungry. You can keep walking through and say you have decided to skip lunch or pay for the fries. Pay for the fries. For the fries? For the fries. <laughs> Gotta pay for the fries. Please stop baby talking. <laughs> It's a good thing you didn't try to sneak through. Maxine, the cafeteria lady, can smell french fry breath from 200 yards away. She's a freak. Uh-huh, maybe you should try some Listerine. <laughs> You're the one walking around with freaking french fry breath. Peter will not be impressed by that. Alright. The whole class takes a job ability and interest test. Would you like to hear the results? Yes sure. or no? Your highest area of aptitude is window decorating. That's it. That was lame. Ten. And inaccurate. Whatever. Ten months. So. I'm gonna do one more high school thing. Um, there is a school trip next week, and you are dying to go. The cost of the trip is $125. Try to pay for it yourself, ask your parents to pay for it, or ask your parents for a loan. Pay for it myself. Your parents are proud of you for saving the money to go on the trip. You have like $3,000! Holy cow, you should be able to pay for it. Anyway, <laughs> you have demonstrated the ability to work hard, save your money, and give yourself enjoyment, happiness, increases. Yay. Woot. That was riveting. Alright. Well, we already tried to talk with Peter about getting engaged, so we're going to go to senior prom with him now. Are you... It's time for the senior prom. Are you planning to attend? Yes. Who will you be going with? Peter again, right? Yeah. 
Peter looks absolutely stunning in his white top hat, tails, and walking stick. <laughs> because he's like a medieval squire. <laughs> What's wrong what with the him? hell? You need to sit down and talk with your boyfriend about how to dress. Dude. Top hats and canes don't work, darling. Dude, even I freaking know how to dress better than that. <laughs> Anyway, the events that transpire over the course of the evening include you and your date dance till dawn. The next day you go out for a champagne brunch. This is the life. You have a great time. What? You didn't do it? Damn it. Again? It's not as bad as one of the stories I've heard about the prom. Alright, you'll love this. A friend of mine, he's going out with this girl, right? You know, a girl of his dreams or whatnot. Asked her out to the prom, right? Okay. He's never had sex before. You know, never. He's a total virgin. And okay. he's about to do it with his girl, right? And then he pulls out a condom, but he doesn't actually know how to put it on. So he actually unrolls it and attempts to yank it on like an athletic sock. <laughs> Dude didn't actually score with that chick that night. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Why the hell would you try and pull on a condom like an athletic sock? What the hell? Why would he you even... read the instructions before he went out on the date. Dude, freaking look at it and then guess. <laughs> like, how are you going to think, yeah, I'm just supposed to yank this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> the two of you try to get romantic, but are both so tired that you pass out in each other's arms. That and he tried to pull on a condom. You have just passed through adolescence. Yay! Family life can be very rough during adolescence. Even though your family expects you to take charge of your life, no one wants to let you have the freedom to do what you want. Uh, judging by your progress through life so far, your family life has been quite good. All things considered, family members can be pain, but no one seems to mind it when you overhaul your hair for three hours every morning in the bathroom. Why you spend three hours on your hair, I don't know. Physically, you have not been very healthy. Go figure. Uh, socially, this phase of life does present its share of problems. Most of these problems fall into the categories of boys. Yes. Yes, according <laughs> to this game, they do. Life <laughs> must have been pretty simple before they showed up. Certainly, this Let's Play was less awkward before they showed up, and... <laughs> Just a bit. And your social adjustment has been remarkable. You are developing a relationship with Peter, so you can see how tricky things can get. Now, regarding your emotional development, you are a romant... You are a romant... Remarkably trustworthy young woman. This trait is bound to take you far, emotionally and vocationally. You are developing into the type of adult that people can confide in. Unfortunately, the burden that comes along with this characteristic is the tendency for people to tell you their problems. You become a, sm you become a strong shoulder that everyone cries on. A positive aspect of your adolescence is your ability to resist temptation and not give in to your impulses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, resisting temptation and not giving in to impulses is not the first thing I would associate with your character. <laughs> but they're probably talking about drugs and alcohol. Since adolescence is a time for testing limits, this can get some people into pretty dangerous situations. However, leading an excessively sheltered life can be boring. You seem to be enjoying most of the things you do, and most of the people you do. Even though <laughs> you experience the blues every once in a while, it's nice to see that you are not having a depressed, traumatized life. Right. <laughs> Even though an occasional explosive outburst is common in most adolescents, you seem to have everything well under control. You seem to be sensitive and gentle. You certainly have a good head on your shoulders. You are not only book smart, but you also have plenty of common sense. Now that your adolescence is almost over, it's time to be hurled out there into the abyss of the real world. I'll bet you didn't know that everything you did so far was part of the fake world. <coughs> 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 ah, alright. Uh, the great question, which I have not been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is, what does a woman want? So who said that? I have no idea. Sigmund Freud. Oh, he did? Yes. 
I thought he didn't give a damn. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So, first things first, we need to go to college. Yep. So let's go to college. Select an action. Enroll in college, choose a major, have a college experience, drop out of college. We need to enroll in college, obviously. Yeah. What kind of college would you like to attend? Low admissions standards, moderate admissions standards, or high admissions standards? Let's go for high, just for the hell of it. Let's see what happens. The entrance requirements for this school are too stri strignant to allow you admission at the present time. I am sorry. <laughs> so let's go for moderate. You're not that smart. What kind of college would you like to attend? Moderate. You have met the qualifications for this school. <coughs> <coughs> you then die in a coughing fit. <coughs> And take up smoking. <laughs> Pack a day. <laughs> you gotta make Holy it through. Cow. I don't think so. Holy cow. Mm. Okay. You are now enrolled. Uh, your resources will decrease by 100 every time you access the college icon. This will cover tuition and college related costs. All right, so let's choose a major. All right, choose a major. You can major in the liberal arts, natural sciences, social sciences, business, or engineering. Social sciences. You know, psychology is considered a liberal art. That's where I'm going. Dude, that's freaking weird. How is it a liberal <laughs> art? <laughs> I don't get that. Anyway, that is odd. I guess because it originally kind of came out of philosophy? Maybe? I guess. But at the point where the those kind of sciences were being invented, basically all of them came out of philosophy. I mean, they Pretty all much. basically expert- they all kind of experted in the same thing. They were doctors, psychologists, and philosophers. I mean... Yep. I knew how to multitask back then, I guess. Social sciences. <laughs> you are obviously interested in people, attitudes, and the study of life as an experience. If you don't become soured by cynicism, you may gain great insight into yourself and others. Unless you intend to teach or go into graduate school. You may have difficulty finding a job with the re same, re same rewards that your course of study provides. All right, fantastic. All right, second, we can... All right, so do you want to live with Peter? Yes. All right. I like how quick he went for that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <coughs> Peter doesn't want to. <gasps> Peter's like, yeah, regular sex is good, but, you know... I'd rather be on my own and pay all the rent myself. Such a loser, God. I don't know why you're with Peter. Freaking Stein either. Eric's girlfriend Henrietta would be better than Peter, the ugly chick. <laughs> <laughs> At least you could, you know, I don't know, get naked with her and compare yourself to her and feel good about yourself. <laughs> True. Since apparently that's what girls do. Yep. Alright. So, let's see, you could get another job, but no, you have access to full-time jobs now, but I don't think you can do that while you're in college. So, we'll start doing missions. You are driving in a car with a male friend when he runs over a dog. Holy shit! Why? I'd freaking freak out if someone I was driving with ran over a dog. He seems rather insensitive about it and doesn't stop the car. He hit a dog! <coughs> he didn't hit a dog, he ran over a dog. There's a difference. Alright, you can be angry or neutral. Angry. You douche. You can tell him to stop the car or act as, as if nothing happened. Demand that he stop the car. 
You get out and see a ten-year-old boy crying over his dead pet. Oh, sorry. Uh, he tells you not to worry about a stupid dog that was running around loose. The man they stop the car or tell him that your friendship is at stake. Our friendship is at stake because you're a douche. I don't know what you do to me if you can't care about running over a dog. He lets the car screech to a stop and says, if you want to help that stupid dog, go help it and walk home. Get out of the car and help the dog or tell him to keep driving. Get out of the car. <laughs> he scares me now. Your friend drives away. You can't believe how insensitive he is. What a jerk. Warning, this episode contains subject matter of a sexual nature. Yes, we're gonna Shocking. <sighs> Alright. While you are walking down a deserted street... Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Um, this is... gonna be awkward, isn't it? A stretch limousine screeches to a halt by the curve. A woman dressed in a long... <coughs> coughs. Um... <laughs> A long black overcoat steps out and walks quickly towards you, peering back over her shoulder through large round sunglasses. Okay. She's extremely tall, leaning over you and resting her trembling hand lightly on your arm. She speaks through a heavy accent in a slow, halting speech. It's obviously Natalia Fit. Uh. I can't remember her name. Natasha Fatal! That's her name! <laughs> like, the villain that was. I teamed up with Boris Badnov and Rocky and Bullwinkle. Natasha Fatal. All right. I am a stranger. I am a stranger to you, but you must help me. My life and the lives of innocent others are in great jeopardy. I don't know what accent that is. I just did a silly voice. <laughs> she produces a small box addressed to someone in a nearby residential area. You must deliver this package. Please be discreet. No police. If the police are involved, they will kill again. Okay. You barely realize what has happened when the woman turns, get back into the limousine, and roars off, leaving you with the package. Seconds later, another long black car speeds in that direction. You can cooperate or not cooperate. Um... Cooperate? Alright. Deliver the package or not? Okay. You arrive at the address. It is a huge split-level house with a Rolls-Royce, a Jaguar, and a Porsche parked in the driveway. You ring the bell, and the tan, middle-aged man with a silver hair and deep blue eyes comes to the door in a satin smoking jacket. And oh silk pajama pants. Holy cow, it's like Spoonie from Spooning with Spoonie. Ah! Okay, you deliver the package and turn to walk away. He asks if you would like to stop in for a drink. No. You don't want to? No, he's gonna rape me. I don't want to. <laughs> it would be interesting. It would be something to do. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of other things I'd rather do. <sighs> Come on. You know, no! I, when I played through this game, I immediately pussied out and left. I want to see what happens. No. <sighs> Fine. I'm gonna let you get me killed. Fine. You know you can just hit the... I found out... According to the instruction manual, you can just hit the escape button, and if you die, and you'll just act like the episode never happened, and you can keep playing. Mm -hmm. Which is something I wish I'd known with Stein Eric. But, anyway. Fine. We will excuse ourselves and go home. Yes. So if you don't want to be raped, that's your business. <laughs> no, I don't. <sighs> Suit yourself. Opportunity knocked. You headed out the door. He could have put you up in tight leather bonds and ravished your delicate, helpless female body. But, you're obviously not into that. No. Well, actually, you were into it, but anyway, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> anyway, lately... I keep your mind. Lately. <laughs> lately, nothing seems to be... Hey, guys. Lately, nothing seems to be going right for you. It seems as though no one understands you or cares about you. Well, the guy that wanted to rape you probably cares about you. <laughs> People <laughs> want, th want things uh, from you, but give nothing in return. Sort of like the rapist. Life is miserable, and sometimes you don't even feel like waking up in the morning. You can be depressed, suicidal, or happy. 
pressed. You can see pe seek help or do nothing. Seek help. Everyone goes through periods like this once in a while. I'm glad you have decided to turn to someone to help you get through it. Who would you like to get help from? A professional, a, a friend, or family member? A friend. Friends or family members are likely to sympathize with you. Such sympathy can be very comforting, especially when you are depressed. Many times they will stick by you until your depression lifts. A professional might have been a bit more helpful with learning how to cope with your depression for now. Your reliance on friends or family proves successful. Okay, then. <laughs> All right. You are walking down a poorly lit street late at night when you see a teen- Why am I always doing this? <laughs> I don't know. I have the suspicion that you're a hooker, actually. Because you're always just wandering around in the middle of the night. Anyway, teenage boy mugging an elderly man. You can be frightened or angry. Frightened? Oh, come on, get angry. You're angry over the dog. The dog got run over. I don't want to be shot. Oh, come on. How is a teenage... Do it! How's a teenage mugger going to get a gun? Come on. Just, just, just do it. All you're, right. you're angry. You can help the old man, look for help, or do nothing. I guess I'll help the old man and die. Okay. Uh, what would you be willing to do? Run towards the phone and call the police, or run up to him and scare him by scream- Scare him away by screaming fire. Let's scream at him. Let's run up to him screaming and flailing. The boy <sighs> spots you approaching and runs away. This potentially dangerous experience ends rather peacefully. The old man hugs you lightly. He was terrified. There you go. That was still stupid. You made it with an old guy. All right. Ew. You are given the <laughs> you are given the opportunity to participate in a charity fundraiser. The proceeds will be used to provide food and shelter to orphaned children. If you decide to help out, even the most minimal capacity will take you a large amount of your time and possibly your resources. It can be helpful or regretful, but too busy. Helpful. You can help out, give a donation, or don't help. Give a donation. Giving a donation is certainly a sacrifice, but not in the way this episode presents the choices. Your donation will help, but not as much as your time would have. Whatever. <laughs> Donate one dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, or a hundred dollars. A hundred. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> All right. Let's let's get some new stuff in here. Let's get up to the top and get some. All right. There we go. Let's do some health ones. <laughs> Looking in the mirror one morning, you begin to wonder what you would look like if you radically changed your hairstyle and made it a different color. You can become more <laughs> interested and curious, or not interested. Interested. You can do it, or not. Do it. What hair would you like to make your color? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Blonde, jet black, red, brown, or purple? Purple! Purple. Yes. You can only get red? You could look like Agent Scully. Why did that get a sigh? What's wrong with Scully? You're just, you're just jealous. Alright, that ought to look interesting. <clears throat> your confidence characteristic shows that you are capable of enduring the comments that people make when you change your looks. Like the fact that you look like an idiot. The more sensitive people say things like, You look different. I can't figure out what it... I can't figure it out. Maybe it's the fact that your hair is purple! <laughs> the tactless ones say, what happened to your hair? You begin to see yourself as a different person. Sexier, wilder, perhaps, or more mysterious. Okay. Regardless of how you feel about it, the new hair, Peter loves it. Yay. Peter's weird. Peter says it makes you look like an anime heroine. What's with the purple? Anyway, he <laughs> says it makes you... Actually, it would kind of make you look like an anime heroine. Anyway, he says it makes you look like a sexy stranger. 
He makes believe that he is having an affair with an exciting new lover. He attacks you wildly and passionately, worshipping your every move. That. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. You could really get used to this. Except for the question, what keeps gnaw that keeps gnawing at the back of your mind? What was wrong with the old lover? Yeah. The fact that it was you. Oh, sorry, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Now, let's see. You haven't had a physical checkup for some time. Can you be concerned or unconcerned? Concerned. You can go to the doctor or put it off for a while. Go to the doctor. The period between adolescence and early adulthood is one of the light of life's periods that poses the least threat to people physically. The doctor checks you over from head to toe. The examination results show your blood pressure is high. This is something that seems to run in your family. You must cut down on salts and fatty foods. If you don't, your blood pressure will be some, so high your blood vessels will explode and blood will just spurt out of you. Okay. Which would probably be the most interesting disease ever. Yes. The blood spurting disease. <laughs> Alright. <coughs> We're skipping heart ones because those are boring. Alright. Harry Shiner, who is... Uh, Harry Shiner is the kindly old man who owns the candy store near the grade school you attended. Whenever you pass the store, you are reminded of the times he put extra pieces of candy in your hand without charging you. Let you run up a tab if you were a penny or two short, or called your mom to give you a ride home if you missed the school bus. Lately, when you pass the old shop, you notice the lights are out. You can be suspicious or unconcerned. Suspicious. The information or do nothing. Get information. You ask the school crossing guard if she has St. Harry. You also need to blow your nose. <laughs> <sighs> you feel better now. Uh, she <laughs> mentions that she that he has probably gone to Florida for a vacation. This doesn't sound right to you. He usually takes a vacation when the kids are off from school. And school is in session these days. <coughs> then seek more information or let it pass. Seek more information. You know that Harry's sister lives upstairs from the candy store. You knock on her door and ask about Harry. How do you feel? Anxious or calm? Anxious. Harry has been thinking about selling business and retiring to Florida. It will seem like part of the neighborhood is going along with him. There you go. Yay! Now we're going to stop the part for now since that was a half an hour, and we will be back folks in the next episode with more of Phoenix's sexual misadventures. <sighs> See you then.